sexyhackers.com Once upon a time, there were a few young girls with a passion for literature, a love of the written word, an inspired infatuation of... Okay, fine. We were a bunch of super dorks with no friends. We spent all day hiding out in our rooms, reading books that were maybe a little inappropriate. Hello, and welcome to this episode of Who Let Me Read This? The podcast where me and a group of friends discuss the wildly inappropriate books of our youth. Um, often badly written. For some reason, everybody loved them, but we read them anyway, <laughs> and it's affected our therapy bills over the years. Um, Hello, welcome everyone. Hello, hello, hello. 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 Our book this month is a Laura Holterman special. Oh. Uh, she has chosen the book this month, um, and so I'm going to be moderating just a little bit. Um, I'm Sarah Wallish. Um, we also have with us here today Michelle White and Andrea Radel Schrader. Ha ha! Yeah, I got it on the first, first try. <laughs> Dang it, Eat it, gonna, Laura. Gonna <laughs> that down. <laughs> Our book this month is Die Softly dum, by dum, Christopher dum. Pike. Oh, man. A gem <laughs> from <laughs> Laura's childhood. Yeah, weirdly um, enough. Before we get started <clears throat> talking about Die Softly, I do want to um, make sure that we thank Sexy Hackers, .com. Sexy Hackers Clothing, SexyHackers.com. Um, for the space for producing our show and yeah. for outfitting us in some sweet merch. Mm -hmm. Swag. Cool shirts. <laughs> Major winks. <laughs> if you're watching us on YouTube today, make sure that you like and subscribe by ringing the bell. Maybe it's up here or up here. I don't know. It's maybe up on one of the top or the sides. It's somewhere. I don't Find know. the bell and ring it. If you're listening to us on your app of choice for podcasts, uh, make sure you give us a five-star review. Because algorithms work in a way that I don't understand. Magic. Uh, on iTunes, it's the purple play button. Yeah. Sweet. I think first graders understand it more than I do. When I, I see think first graders. They go, like, definitely. and subscribe. I'm like, what? Huh? <laughs> and they're like, yeah, it's right here. And they know exactly where to point in their video for, like, like being pointing video. right yeah. at the button. <laughs> oh, Sorcery. Anyway. We're not that old. A little bit. I'm that old. I mean... I'll just say it. <laughs> We're old enough to have read Die Softly yep. at far too young an age. You've, yeah. Uh, I was probably about 10. Oh, Is my. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mom, what's strychnine? <laughs> So we uh so we're gonna be covering a couple fun highlights in the beginning of the book. Yeah. Um mm -hmm. so we're gonna go through a couple of different um plot points and a whole lot of WTF moments on so this many. to start off. So uh the majority of the story is told through a series of flash flashbacks as Herb, our hero describes the sequence of events to a Detective Fitzsimmons. Um, to make it even more disjointed, Pike really kicks things off with kind of a David Lynch-style dream sequence to foreshadow and meet all the characters. So we have Sammy and Theo, who are Herb's best friends. Um, I don't know why anyone's friends with him. Uh, <laughs> Alexa, his cheerleader love with a heart of gold dream girl. Aww. Ugh. Uh, Lisa, her bitchy <gasps> best friend. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, Steven, the mean jock who's dating Alexa. Mm. Uh, and Roger, Theo's brother and Lisa's boyfriend who died in a cocaine overdose slash car accident six months ago. Yay, fun. Yeah. I, he actually, he might be my favorite character. Yeah, Roger. you know what? Roger. Justice for dead. Roger. <laughs> Justice for Roger. He's dead the whole time. <laughs> uh, so we're, we're starting off um, with this book where Herb's friend Sammy has encouraged him to use his amazing photography skills. So to, good. So good. To yeah. take pictures of cheerleaders in the shower on Friday. But he was unsure because Alexa might like him. Oh, no. What do I do? Yeah, right. Oh. Hormones win. <laughs> of course. Um, <laughs> then next, we get an intense, super high-tech camera equipment description from 1991. <laughs> yes. Uh, that goes on so for, like, and pages burn. and pages. <laughs> he hooks the computer up to a VCR. <laughs> mm -hmm. Super high-tech. 
yeah. fancy equipment, the VCR, yeah. to make it delay, I guess. Yeah, there's like, a lot of hand wavy like, engineering going on. Yes, it's, Christopher Park, Pike, we know you're smart. Yeah. I, I don't believe that Christopher Pike actually knows anything no, about engineering. Not. Or anything. Don't sue me, Christopher Pike. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, uh, so he does this, he breaks into the showers and sets up his cameras. And then the next day, he decides to just ditch school. Um, but when he's driving to the locker room the next day, he sees a fiery car crash <gasps> where Roger died six months ago. Ooh. Turns out it's Lisa. Oh, no. Oh, no. Mm. And her autopsy reveals mm. she was a longtime cocaine user. Ooh. Yep. To be fair. <laughs> Sammy said to take pictures for revenge and to pass them out and publicly oh, yeah. shame all the popular girls. Right. So, I mean, her reasoning was good. <laughs> <laughs> Sound reasoning. Exactly. Totally. So, so let's go back to this first point. So Sammy is really the driving force in this. Yeah. Yes. She instigates the um, whole thing of like, isn't this a great idea? Let's do this. Those bad, bad, pretty girls. I'm going to I'm going to distribute the pictures at the end of the year senior party. Yes. yes. Like of that's them naked, her plan. which wouldn't embarrass them at all cuz they're all hot. So I don't even get <laughs> yeah. that. They'd right. be like, "Yeah, that's me in that shower." Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Immediately like my first assumption until um much much later in the book was just like so Sammy's real gay. Like yeah. I mean, if only. If like, only the book was about how gay Sammy is. And that would, it yeah, would have been be a lot better. better of a book. Yeah. I would have enjoyed it a lot more. <laughs> but Herb has like zero um, anything, like in terms of personality, conscience, thought process. So he's just like, yeah, okay, let's put a thing in the showers. Like Herb yeah. is the worst. He's the literal worst. Yeah. The worst. He, he's like a mix between an incel and like a nice guy TM. Ugh. Yeah, Where it's he's a like, lot. I am so nice. Girls don't like me. Nobody wants have greasy to have hair. Me. I don't know. Yeah, he's yeah. like super tall, very skinny, like long straggly hair. He washes his jeans once every six months, whether they need it or not. Yes. Well, you. He works in a factory, by the way, after school. You wear your jeans so, like, every day and also to work at a factory. Yeah. And you're <laughs> saying that you're going to wash them every six months, whether they need it or yeah. not. Because I guarantee it's not or not. No, <laughs> it's they needed they need it. it. <laughs> they needed it many, many moons ago. Um, he like forgets things all the time. He talks about how he doesn't remember like anything ever, including important events of his childhood. Like Herb needs a doctor, a therapist, like a life coach. Mm -hmm. Herb needs yeah. a lot. Yep. This entire bo book took place in my head <laughs> where my dad lived when I was in high school, where I lived for like six months on an old road <laughs> this like this whole book so it was very odd i, could, yeah. I, I actually had a friend is actually the um inspiration for the song old town road <laughs> <laughs> well totally i had true. a friend who on our road got hit by a drunk driver and died oh. while we were in high school so i like pictured yeah, yeah. it, it all came together for me yes oh um and uh, Part of his physical description or what how he describes himself, he was unkempt, um, should not mean that your hair comes out in clumps. Is that how he describes yeah. it? He's like, when you brush your hair, it just comes out in clumps. Yeah. And he never asks out a girl because he knows he would just be turned down. He's a realist. And I was like, if I have to hear that bullshit crap <laughs> one more time from dudes, I'm going to throw him yeah. out a window. Like, I read that part aloud to <laughs> Nick, my partner, and I was like... This fucking guy. <laughs> and know. he was like, what are you reading? What, you, what are you reading? reading? And I was like, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. Sometimes I feel like some guys need to be more realists. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, um, I put? And then, I feel like I might have marked this page oh, where, they, where he describes himself. <laughs> and not only does he describe himself like in the least uh charming terms of mm -hmm. all time but like every other character unless they are a prototypically hot lady yeah. um gets like the roughest description his friend mm -hmm. his friend sammy <sighs> He oh, yeah. spends about half We're a page a talking about her. I think my favorite part is the description of her hair because that's just brutal. He uh, That one I remember offhand. 
Her hair was like a dish towel that got stuck in the garbage disposal. Yep. Like, yeah, like, like I'm this sorry, is what? your friend. Yep. Herb is the worst, you guys. Um, I know I say every I mean, dude in every book that we read is the worst, <laughs> but like. I don't and, know what this says about Christopher Pike. What? Um, Christopher Pike has some skewed views of yeah. humans um but particularly women yeah i was when i was t- like <laughs> reading the book and writing down little notes i definitely wrote a note that said christopher pike doesn't like women very much question mark <laughs> and then like three pages later i'm like just cross that question out. <laughs> Confirm. Exclamation, point. <laughs> exclamation point underline um, underline can we underline. read the uh description of sammy a lot yes, though i feel yeah. like it's egregious enough that yes. it has to be read mm-hmm. yes of his best friend of his yes how yeah. he describes her one of his best friends of his two friends yes of his two friends this is one of them i'm a fan of his other friend yeah theo's mm-hmm. not Theo's yeah. well pretty solid drives man. drunk a lot but <laughs> he'd known sammy forever she had hung out with theo and him since they were kids exploring the hills surrounding manville Back then, she had been a tomboy, and she'd grown up not entirely feminine. Gay? Maybe? (laughs) Hopefully? No. No. First, there were her clothes. She dressed like an ex-convict. A A male male (laughs) ex-convict. She was fond of wearing sweatshirts, even on 90-degree days. (coughs) That day, she had on an extra-large long-sleeve wool shirt with a stencil of Fred Fred Flintstone on the front. P.S. I want that shirt. (laughs) Sammy was also overweight. She didn't have a body. Her body had her. Uh-huh. Somewhere inside, hidden beneath the rolls of fat, was the real Sammy. Ooh. She could have been an attractive girl. Herb knew because he'd seen her baby pictures. Oh, excuse me, what? Uh-huh. <laughs> he'd seen her when she was a baby, although that time period naturally lay outside the domain of his higher brain centers. Uh-huh. Sorry, what? <laughs> her hair was light brown, healthy enough, but cut like a dish towel that had fallen into a garbage disposal. She had bangs that had grown into tangled strings that spent most of their time collecting sweat. She never wore makeup. She said she was allergic to it, but Herb thought she simply didn't know how to put it on. Or if she did put it on, it would show that she cared. And above all else, Sammy Smith didn't want anyone to know that she cared what anybody thought about her. And she does not care what you think, Herb. And Herb. Ugh. Is that... I'm now picturing... um. What is her name? Ali Sheedy from... Oh, right? Ali Sheedy. Yes. Super hottie but, from The Breakfast Club. Yes, yes, but like a fat version. Yep. Yeah. Like, oh. Me. So, in high school. So no. that's his <laughs> best friend. And she's encouraging him to take pictures of cheerleaders in the shower to get back at them. Mm-hmm. And then, so then we launch into this amazing description of camera equipment from the 90s. For so long. For Why? So long. Christopher oh. Pike, you are not a photography buff. We no. get it. You took one basic class. Yeah. You're fine. He knows how to develop so, film, though. It's yeah. Twice. Hard. He yeah. explains it. Oh, so we know so that um, Charles Dickens got paid by the word. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think Christopher Pike got, like, had a word count that he had to meet for this book and he was like oh let me just uh describe Listen, this in great I mean, detail meet my word count possibly because it's not very long no it doesn't have a complicated plot so he really had to dig for i mean i would have went into something else though like, <laughs> well yeah and <laughs> his like his choices to ramble on about are buck wild like he spends pages and pages on the camera setup and developing film and then we get like a half page maybe about like super intense interesting things that happen yeah yeah like one things, little sentence yeah like, anything interesting wraps up super super quickly and then he spends five pages talking right. about how he hooked up a camera to a vcr to take time lapse pictures her dad's a paraplegic i think she did it anyways yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Like, yeah. just breezes through a lot of things yeah. Obviously, we have a lot of WTFs oh, yes. about so everything about this book. But before we hit those, we want to take a quick second for a message from our sponsors, Yay. Sexy Hackers. Mm-hmm. Sexyhackers.com. Sexyhackers.com. And we're back with some... Delightful WTFs about Die Softly by Christopher Pike. 
I like your cover Laura's better than pick. my cover. Yeah, um, show the other cover. So there are two different covers for this book. Change. One of them looks like maybe they reissued it. Yeah, and we're like, let's make it more modern and edgy. Mine is straight up like 1991. Cursive Some writing. Fluorescent cursive writing. I love yeah. it. Ours looks like a like nineteen ninety eight direct to VHS thriller mm-hmm. like Ooh, that you yes. would pick up at Blockbuster. Yes. Yes. Sure. If that doesn't exist yet, can we make this movie? Starring <gasps> a pre Dawson's yes. Creek Katie Holmes. Yeah. Yeah. As Sammy because they couldn't actually cast anyone fast. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Not. <laughs> no, of course not. <laughs> the nineties. Woo. Um, so I'd say before we dive into any of our WTFs, um, the car accident nonsense oh that came up. So can I first say, so Herb's just allowed to just ditch school whenever, I guess. Well, his mom's a single mom and she's working yeah. desperately to support them. And he's working, <laughs> what is How it like 6 PM to 2 30 AM yeah, on school nights. Herb both work like second yeah. shift at it's a... a t- 12 30 or is it 2 30 oh, i think it's 2 30 because he works he said he works the split shift so that would be like a mid between um yeah. second, second and third, third shift yeah so it was bonkers well, yeah well um like at the electronics plant wages so. have not kept up with inflation <laughs> clearly even in 1991 clearly yeah. Um, but obviously this was not a problem because he's 18, almost 19. In mm-hmm. the Why are you still in high school? Right? That's yeah. what I was wondering. I mean, think about what we know about her. <laughs> I can't say I'm he's super shocked C that maybe he struggled with student. When you're little, when you're like five, four going on five, like you, they kind of give, if you're in that Do middle ground. Do you think ground, his mom redshirted him? His mom, might have, yeah, his mom might have redshirted him and been like, well, he's not quite ready for kindergarten yet. Because you're either going to be the youngest kid there or, or you're going to be oldest. the oldest kid. Mm-hmm. Thanks. Um, I actually think it's potentially a more responsible parenting choice to have them be the oldest versus the youngest. Depending so on their can, maturity. Yeah, depending yeah. on their maturity. And her but doesn't have that. what we know. So <laughs> we know that. <laughs> yes. Clearly no. No. So he's, he takes the day off of school and we get this description of like Herb's day off, which is <laughs> yes. the worst 90s movie ever. Yeah. No, definitely not the Ferris Bueller. He really just lays around and eats cereal, which I'm not knocking he's it. Cameron. It's just not a great description. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but not because Cameron's awesome yeah. and Herb is the worst. He's like, Cameron. he's. Cameron from Ferris Bueller, Bueller, the friend who doesn't oh, want to yeah. go anywhere. Cameron's- he just wants to stay at home. Mm-hmm. He's like. <laughs> Cameron in like the bad timeline, like he's bad place Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> so Herb is Herb's taking the day off school. He waits until it's dark out. He's now driving back to the school locker rooms where he set up his super high tech equipment that no one's gonna notice a VCR in yeah, the corner of the even showers. Says there's cords yeah. dangling and like yeah. it's or a, do they notice and they like it a little bit? Oh, <laughs> Oh, whole other discussion. <laughs> um, and, you know, he's like broken into the school and done all this, this setup stuff. And I'm sorry, but you're, you're going to put your photography equipment in, from someone who actually does do photography. You're going to put that in your showers, in the shower with the steam. Mm-hmm. I, all right, fine. Yeah. So he skips school. He's going back to get his film um, so he can develop it. Woo! Well, we skipped over him taking pictures of the cheerleaders. Oh, oh yeah, he prior. took pictures of the cheerleaders for the uh, like for the, the yearbook. Year, the yearbook because Sammy originally did it and she messed him up. He thinks on purpose. <gasps> mm-hmm. That's right. So he yes. gets to take pictures of those cheerleaders yes. and does a good job and ends up giving the prettiest one a ride home mm-hmm. and Alexa eating at McDonald's with her. <gasps> yes. Super romantic. The whole yes. like hour that it takes him to fall madly in love with her to the degree that he loses all sense of like logic and like oh my gosh. cohesion later in the book. But yeah. guess who comes and messes it up? Sammy. And Sammy. Stephen. Well, well yeah, 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 Stephen, her boyfriend. <laughs> yes. But Sammy Oops. shows up. It was all like, you know. Give me a ride. Yeah. My, my car, car doesn't start. work. No, don't check it. Just believe me that it doesn't start. I need a ride home. Sammy's not discreet. Like, (laughs) nobody in this book is particularly discreet, but Sammy's the least discreet of a group of people that are very not discreet. Mm -hmm. 
But he's like on his way to get his film and is like, what's this? I see some smoke. Oh, a car on fire. Mm-hmm. Oh. I better go check it out. Crash. I better go check it out. I better climb down a ravine mm-hmm. to check out this horrible car crash. Because you can't be bothered to wash your blue jeans once <laughs> a week, even. No, more than I once in six months. But let's climb down a ravine. realistic. Do it once a month. Yeah. That's fine. They're jeans. They're jeans. I rewear. But man, oh man, six months? Come on. For real. And this is before, like, the he's dawn lucky. of Febreze. Like, yeah. He's lucky those pants didn't start on fire. <laughs> yes. Right? Right. So, like, yeah, he hikes on down there, you know, with his Herculean effort to <sighs> see a totally burned body. Almost mm-hmm. burned. An almost totally burned body of Lisa the mean cheerleader. Lisa! <gasps> Alexa's best friend. Oh, no. But it's okay because she was bitchy. Yeah. He got there just in time to see her face melt. Oh, yes. Yeah. What a description. Um, I actually put a note in the right off at that the skull. point that just said, it's not that easy to burn a body. Discuss. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, has, uh, did Christopher Pike, well, I guess 1991 was pre-Law and Order. Mm. Mm-hmm. So maybe he didn't know that it's really hard to burn a body. Yeah. I still feel like like the Discovery Channel existed. There must have been some true crime shows. Like, SVU. I feel like yeah. it's been on for like thirty years. <laughs> Even like, I think it's something like eighteen seasons. Yeah. Or, yeah well, Dateline, some time, twenty-two. But, but that's enough. okay. But yeah, like Dateline, sixty minutes. But unsolved back, mysteries. Yeah, but, but back in nineteen ninety-one, it was weird to ask the question like, "Hey guys, do faces melt?" You know, um, yeah. Now How long the- would a car have to be burning to make the body in it unrecognizable? Like, just for my book, though. Yeah. Because <laughs> now you have to, back then you had to ask people that. Now you just ask the internet and it's fine. Right. But the internet is much less judgy than your local reference librarian. <laughs> Which? Well, um, P.S. I love reference librarians. So, like, <laughs> get down with your bad selves. But yes. also, you know that when somebody comes in and asks you a weird question, you're like, oh, geez. Oh, Let me just guy. stop at the funeral home real quick. <laughs> right? Yeah. Ooh. So, uh, tell me about unrecognizable yes. burned bodies, <laughs> right. Undertaker. <laughs> Yeah, ask your local undertaker. I have uh, I've mentioned before that I'm pretty sure I was on a list at, at my library. Um, there was a series of books um, in like the uh, the 80s through the 90s um, that I think were published up until like the early 2000s that were all um, crime reference for writers. And I definitely like repeatedly checked out. There was one on wounds and injuries Ooh. and one on like poisons and potions. And it was all about the effects of things on bodies and how long things take to happen. And in retrospect, I'm really glad I was never like questioned by the police <laughs> <laughs> because I spent a lot of time with those books. <laughs> It's it's really interesting. It's like it the um like the body farms, mm-hmm. I, which oh, yeah. I learned about on SVU, where they like they put out dead bodies mm-hmm. and then they study them to learn what affects what. Which, for future reference, that's what I would like to be done. You know, put me out for plant science me. and yeah. just yeah, plant me. I'm kidding. No, it's all written in there. I told Marcus very specifically I want to be turned into a diamond that's hidden into a home and it has to be um, turned into like this haunted house situation. <gasps> Amazing. And that's Ooh. how he celebrates my death every year. That's, yeah, it was a whole discussion. Ah, I love anyway. it. Mine is being thrown into a bog. Becoming <laughs> oh. a bog person. Oh. Yeah. I just, why wait until you're dead? And your bones get spongy. Oh. Yeah. That sounds comfy. Just do that now. <laughs> <laughs> sounds great. Bog witch. The only thing I request is to be in a big fluffy dress with no shoes on. <laughs> Got nice. It. Got to be comfy in the afterlife. And put blush on me. <laughs> do not forget. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <clears throat> so... Yeah, so now we've we've come upon this fiery car accident, and it's mm-hmm. exactly where um, so Lisa's on fire. That's exactly where her boyfriend burned up in a car accident. Roger, yeah, yeah Roger, dun, dun, um, dun, dun. who also it, was a coke fiend. Yeah, uh, yeah. We don't know this surprise. yet, though. Yes, he had lots of coke in his body, um, but his brother Theo doesn't believe that. His brother Theo thinks that Lisa had something to do with his death. Mm-hmm. He's convinced it was her fault somehow, but Sammy was her alibi. Sammy was like, no, I saw her at the movies mm-hmm. that night. Which immediately is a red flag because those bitches ain't going to the movies together. No. Yeah. True. No. But 
they weren't together. They were just, you saw each other there, but no teenage girl that I know goes to the movies alone. No. That's something you grow into an older age that you're I like, still don't. Movies alone. Oh my God, I love going to oh, movies, movies alone. alone. But when I was in high school, never. No. I would have been like, no, I can't. <laughs> Someone might see me. <laughs> I also feel like Christopher Pike doesn't know that much about cocaine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably fair. That's made pretty clear throughout the whole book. Yeah. I, th- I think there's like long term effects. I'm like, what were those long term effects they found in this burned body? <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure that yeah. would have been all burned up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Your nose would be the first Nasal to go. Damage, like, I think, is the only thing you can really tell. Yeah. yeah. In that sort of burn. a life. Like, they're only 17. It can't be that long. Yeah. 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 That's true. I, I started doing cocaine when I was four years old. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> really wanted to crawl. Oh. Um, and it, it, those are things that I didn't pick up on as a kid. So like, like yeah. I said, I read this when I was like 10 years old on accident, totally sneaking books from the adult section of the library. Cause our two room library in Nakusa, Wisconsin was like kids books and then adults back here. And so I would like reach behind the shelf and like grab a book. <laughs> Because you, as you get yelled at, you get kicked out of those sections by the librarian. They didn't say anything when I actually checked out the books, though, which is weird. <laughs> Not paying attention. They at only all. knew which books were in which section by where they were on the floor. Yeah. And so, as long as they didn't see you in the wrong section, they're like, "Yeah, it must be out of the section that she was supposed to be in." Right. <laughs> so, reading this as a and again, I always guess as a kid, and I definitely like reread it over the years. Um. Herb was not as bad of a guy. Something in me was like, mm, I don't know. He's kind of weird, but he wasn't like a bad person. And that definitely changed reading it this time through. Like, oh, yeah. Hugely. He's the worst. It's like the Xander effect. Mm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, when Xander you watch Buffy, Buffy as a as a young like teenager or a preteen, you're like, Xander's just like me. He's awkward and goofy. And then you watch as an adult and you're like, he's a sociopath kind <laughs> of like <laughs> <is> the worst. <laughs> yeah. Mm. <sighs> yeah. But I, th- I think I that's I think he was so the worst. worst. I, <laughs> I hate him. I hate him so much. I just thought he was dumb. Well, yeah. Like, just naive. Like, come on, dude. But not m- intentionally the worst or, like, fl- you know. He, he does describe like, his mom a little too. Uh, yes. I was trying to remember. Uncomfortably. Like, for, yeah. Mm. He, there's a whole bit where he talks about. Um, this was my first thing. I, I was like, you're not just a, a weird teenage boy. You're, like, a weird human in general. Yeah. Um, <laughs> He talks about like his mom and how she's just as attractive and her body is just as hot as any of the teenagers. Yep. Uh, and that he stopped being comfortable with physical affection from her when he like turned got into the seventh grade and started thinking about sex all the time. Ew. Yep. Which like, Herb, do you wanna do you wanna fuck your mom? <laughs> do you yeah. wanna fuck your mom? Like there's a, a weird there's a we weird like inability for him to like, moment? to to pull apart like what is sexual contact and what is not sexual contact mm-hmm. that like is very weird to I I mean yeah. I I grew up in a very like affectionate family like, yeah mm-hmm. I'll I like I I'll hold hands with my mom like just casually because mm-hmm. we're like weirdos nope like, I'm but not. you know mm-hmm. like. And hugging and sitting on the couch and being like wah, 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 up yeah. in each other's business like that's my family too that's my that mom's like do. sleep on the floor if you're scared <laughs> <laughs> no joke never slept in a mo- in a bed with my mother ever i have no memory it's like oh, if no. you are scared you sleep on the floor and and i herb could have benefited from that i think herb could have benefited from yeah. a little more sleeping on the floor no just Some like boundary just boundaries just boundaries herb needs boundaries well, it's yes. just the two of them since uh m- dad left when when he was pretty seven i believe yeah, yeah. he said yeah he was a young and crucial yeah. age yeah herb's a mess guys <laughs> and like laura had said before a lot of this is told in flashback mm-hmm so not only is this um, all of Herb's, like, cuckoo banana stuff <laughs> yes. happening, but it's, like, what he is thinking. It's it's what was apparently important to him, important enough for him to remember. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, Which is bonkers. Yeah. It's all bonkers. Like, he is the weirdest narrator. It's a journey. <laughs> It's, it's a journey me. that we are going to continue on next week. Oh. Aha! 
Yes, we are out of time for this week, but next week we are going to be back with the next piece of the plot of Die Softly by Christopher Pike and a whole lot more WTFs because this book is full of them. Uh, so many. So many. So Christopher many. Pike, give us the call. We'll chat. Don't call us, please. Don't call, Don't call us. us. No. Don't um, do but that. <laughs> thank you to sexyhackers.com for outfitting us in wonderful t-shirts. Give us that super cool space. Make sure that you subscribe wherever it's up it is. here Ring the or over here like, or it might be down here. Right here. Like a thing. <laughs> subscribe to a thing. If you're listening on a, your podcast app of choice, make sure that you give us a review and subscribe so you know when the next one's happening. Woo! Yeah. Bye. Right. We'll see you guys all next week on Wednesday. Bye. Sexyhackers.com. Yeah. Stream team.